today we're going to talk about where to start when you are first starting new. This is for anyone who's feeling stuck and not sure which direction to go with your coaching business. And you might be thinking, it is the shining object syndrome. And this is probably the whole entire week I've been hearing about this term, shiny object syndrome. But it's actually something else that's holding you back and that's tripping you up. And so today I'm going to cover three very simple steps to get you started. And trust me, these are tips that really change my business around. And so I hope by sharing these with you, it's also going to be a game changer for you. Because right now I know it's the summertime and you're probably having a lot of things that's on your plate. And this is probably the last place that you wanted to be is thinking about how am I going to move my business forward? So today I'm going to share three very simple tips with you to get you started, to get your summer going, to get your fall going so that you can have actually something to work with. And please do stick around because I do have some resources just for you. So let's get started. All right, first of all, let's talk about the shiny object syndrome. Now, I'm not saying that it doesn't exist, but just by looking at the definition, and here's the definition. The definition of shiny object syndrome is the fact that there is a constant or continuation of the state of distraction brought to you by an ongoing belief that something new is worth pursuing. Now, most coaches that I know, especially if you're starting out new, this is not what you're struggling with. And so here's my belief, right? So my belief is that what you're actually struggling with is this avoidance behavior. What is avoidance behavior? Avoidance behavior as human being, what hardwire to, to move towards the pleasure and avoid the pain, right? So if anything that's painful, that's not pleasant, sometimes the fear will just start kicking in based on the experiences that we have, right? Maybe let's take getting a dog bite. I know some ladies in my group coaching program, they got bitten by the dog. And so they always have this fear of approaching the dog. When dog come in, they just naturally move away and they don't want to be around the dog. Other times they're making this narrative in their head and thinking, well, I'm just going to imagine that I'm getting bitten by the dog and it feels horrible. So I'm just going to avoid it altogether. So that's avoidance. Uh, behavior based on the reaction that people have in order to escape from something that's painful, something that's not pleasant, something that is completely new. And if you look at your journey, right, it's not the shiny object syndrome that you're experiencing. Shiny object syndrome doesn't come in play until later. Maybe you're down to like fourth year or fifth year, you're more, much more down the line in your coaching business that you start to experience the shiny object syndrome. Uh, one of the coach, um, Helen used to be my client, and now she's a mindset coach inside my group program. And so what she talks about is actually when you know little, it's dangerous thing, right? Because we have this shiny object syndrome. We know a little bit. And what, what do we do? We get the, we see these new things that start to come out and we get distracted. So your shiny object syndrome doesn't come in to play until probably a year or two or three down the line. But when you're first starting out and you're starting new and you have no idea of which direction to go, it's probably the avoidance behavior that you're experiencing where you're trying to avoid something that's new, something that's scary, something that's not known, something that's uncertain, which causes this series of action for you to actually not take any action. So think about your own narrative about how technology savvy you are, right? A lot of coaches in my world, they're saying, well, I'm not really tech savvy, so I can do a live video. I'm not very camera pretty, so I can do video. Or maybe it's a client relationship or selling coaching for that matter, right? It's that fear that lead to and feed into that avoidance behavior. Now, so knowing what is stopping you, how can we actually address this and actually keep you moving forward so that it's not scary anymore and you actually have a direction to go? And I don't know about you, but for me, when I don't know what direction that I need to go, then I don't go anywhere. And this is a saying, if you graduated from IPAC, you probably heard this phrase uh, in the past, where if you are not sure where to go, you go from where you are, right? But what does that even mean? <laughs> 
So today I'm going to share three tips with you that's going to help you to get you going and so that it doesn't feel very scary anymore. Okay. All right. So if you're watching this as a replay, I love for you to comment down below. What are you struggling with right now? What are you experiencing right now? Is it shiny object syndrome or is it this avoidance behavior where you're not sure the direction that you need to go? So anything that's new, scary, then what do we do? We just not do it all together. And so if you graduated from iPad coaching, we can probably uh, label this as that level one and level two energy, right? Level one is where you're avoiding things, apathetic, and, and you just don't want to do anything. So if you're new, if that resonates, drop a one into the comment and down below. Okay. All right. So three steps for new coaches. How do you get started? Number one, you probably hear this from everywhere all the time. It's about defining your niche and finding your value proposition. And I'm going to be straight up here and tell you that, yes, they're right. That is your first step. You need to define your niche, especially if you want to be in this online world. In an in-person world, I can probably have a conversation and I can talk to people and I might not need to use my niche per se, right? But if you wanted to really create a brand to stand out, you do need to have a niche. And so having that clarity is going to guide you on a lot of different things in terms of creating your marketing messages, helping you to be clear in terms of who is supposed to reach your social media posts or watching your video, it gives you that clarity of who needs to pay attention to you. And I do have a free resource that I'm going to drop into the comment down below. It has three steps to help you to define that avatar and to help you identify that niche. So I have that resource and this is something that you've been working on. Um, I'm going to drop it into the comment down below so that you can have a copy of it. This way you can start working on it. All right. And I would say, listen, if you have to spend a lot of time and you find yourself feeling stuck, just trying to perfect it. I want you to actually grab a strategy call with me because I can help you to get clarity on that. Right. I know a lot of coaches actually spend months and months just trying to perfect that and they find themselves tweaking it here and there and then they're not happy with it. They come back, they wanted to do some more work and that's just the time that's wasted and it's not needed. So if that is what you're struggling with, first of all, grab that resource that I have for you and also book your strategy call so that I can help you to tackle through this. All right, so that's step number one, simple step, right? Simple step, but it takes a longer to overcome. It's the biggest hurdle that a lot of coaches are going through. So I, I created this resource for you. It is in the comment below, so you can grab it. Okay, there you go. All right, so the second step of what you want to do uh, as a newbie coach and starting out and you're not quite sure like which direction to go and where to turn to, I want you to start developing that learning mindset. And this is something that a lot of coaches have and which it becomes a problem later on when you start experiencing the shiny object syndrome, because you have this learning mindset and everything is new. You want to learn stuff. And so we get into that risk of running into the shiny object syndrome, but that doesn't happen until later, right? So second step is to develop that learning mindset. And you need to start changing that perspective of I am not tech savvy to I am learning this. Okay. I am learning this and it may not be perfect. It may not be the best videos ever that I put out there. I won't be able to do what Michelle does with all these fancy stuff with the music, with the background and all that stuff, but that's okay. I'm learning. And so that's the mindset I want you to walk in with, um, especially if you're not sure where to start and you're starting new. Okay. Um, because what happened is if you don't have this learning mindset, you start running into that avoidance behavior just by pure fear of, I don't know how to overcome this. I don't know how to do this. And therefore I'm just not going to do it. I don't like social media. I'm not good with social media and therefore I'm just not going to do it. So that's where your avoidance behavior start to kick in and start to show up. Right. So you got to have that learning mindset and which I know, I believe you, I know that you can do this. You're a great coach and that mindset is really your jam. It's your thing. And so apply those skills on yourself whenever you start recognizing this is an avoidance behavior. 
All right. So we covered the first step, which is clarity to your niche and your value proposition. Who do you help with what and how do you serve them? That's step number one. Step number two is having this learning mindset. And step number three, which is very important, and a lot of coaches, I don't know why you're missing this step. Okay. This is a very important step. And that step is to build your online presence. (laughs) <laughs> right? Um, I, I am a visibility marketing coach for a reason because I want you to start building that online visibility. Your online presence doesn't come and doesn't happen overnight. It takes time for people to get to know you, for people to become familiar with you, and for you to actually create and build authority and credibility online. Like I spent the last 20 years in a healthcare setting and nobody knows that I was a coach, right? No one knows my credential. No one knows that I got certified. And so if I were to not start with the online presence, nobody would know that I ever exist. And this is why it's so important as you're putting out your social media posts or as you're thinking about where do I begin, you definitely want to incorporate that online presence. If you're going to do it in person, that's a different strategy. I won't have time to go into that in-person strategy, but we're talking about this remotely, right? If you enjoy traveling, there's a new phrase that I learned the other day. uh, Home is where the Wi-Fi is. If that is a lifestyle that you enjoy doing, then what you want is you want to leverage this online presence. And when do you start? You start now. (laughs) By the time you think about, oh, it is important for me to build an online presence, it's already too late, (laughs) okay? So I want you to start today to build that online presence. And so don't wait for, oh, I'll just wait till I have my LLC. I'll just wait till I have this. I'll just wait till I have my book come out. That's already too late. By the time your book come out, you already need that visibility. You need that online presence. So other things like creating your website, that's not important. That doesn't need to happen till later, right? Um, Other things like, oh, I need to be on podcast. Yes, that's important, but that's not your super important step, right? So your step number three is really to start curating that audience, that presence uh, that you have. So start building followers, start connecting with your avatar, right? So step number one was important. So three steps. Now, I'm going to give you a bonus step, right? This is your bonus step. If you don't know where to start and if you're starting new, the bonus step is you want to be able to connect and network. Now, if you are not already in my group, Attract Dream Client and Boost Your Sales Community on Facebook, I'm going to drop another link so that you can come in and join us. Why is it important to connect with other coaches? Well, maybe someone else had done something already and by you holding back and and just staying in your room or in a workplace, you have no way to identify that maybe someone else has already done it. And so what I would do is what uh, I would encourage you once you join the community, you actually use a, as a resource place where you can find answers. You can connect with other coaches who may have done the things that you are struggling with already, right? That's the power of community. And this is why you want to join community so that you can build that relationship and maybe tap into other collectives, connect with other coaches who are on a similar journey or maybe it's the same niche and how did they discover their niche, right? So you wanted to utilize that community sense so that you can actually get started and get going. Okay, so where do you start when you're first starting out and you're starting new? Now, uh, I know a lot of coaches believe that it's the shiny object syndrome, but it's not the shiny object syndrome. It's the actual avoidance behavior because something is new and you're new to this industry. You're new to this whole idea of putting yourself out there and start marketing yourself. This whole thing is completely foreign to you. So our fear will kick in and put us into this avoidance behavior. So when you have no direction to go, where do you go? You don't go anywhere because of that avoidance behavior. So I'm giving you three steps of how you can get started. First, is you need to have a niche, you need to have an avatar, and I drop the resource into the comment down below so you can grab that, start working on it, and if you've been stuck with it, you keep changing it for how many times, I can't even tell you, then what I want you to do is actually grab a strategy call with me, and then so we can talk about it, I can help you with that. 
I'll drop that link as well. The second step is to have a learning mindset, right? That learning mindset will change. I can't do this. I can't go live. I can't do marketing from that to actually I'm learning this, right? That there's a shift of energy. I'm learning this. And then step number three is actually to start building your online presence. You need the audience. You're in a people business. So when you are in a people business, what you want is people. So get your people, get people rally behind you every time you post something so that it will help you to break the algorithm. And that's a different topic and I'm gonna cover it in another Lunch and Learn. But you want to have people behind you so that they can celebrate you, they can cheer you on, they can actually be there and do more referral for you and you need that step initially to get started. So your step number three is to build your online presence. Okay, now, Here's your action step. If you're watching this as a replay later, what I want you to do is actually hit reply to my email, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to tell me what is that one thing that you're going to work on this week? Is it a niche? Is it a learning mindset? Is it building your online presence? What is it that you're going to do in your business this week so that you can be ready when the school goes back to, when the summer vacation is done, right? You would be ready to take your business to the next level, okay? All right, I will see you in next week's Launch and Learn. Again, I'm calling this Launch and Learn because it's really Launch and Learn. So I'll bring you in another topic for you that you would love and enjoy. I'll see you next week. Bye.